So we've taken a look at vertical shifts, horizontal shifts, reflections. There's so many other things we can do with graphs. So one of the other things that we're going to look at is we're going to look at stretching and shrinking. And first we want to just look at it in the vertical manner. So that's why there's a V over here is to let you know that this is the vertical shrink and stretch. Now, if C, the leading coefficient in front of your function, is greater than 1, you're going to stretch it. Now when you stretch it, it's actually going to become smaller than what you started with. So you're like, it's like taking your function and pulling it up so that it gets smaller. Now if your coefficient is between 0 and 1, so that means if it's a fraction, then you're going to shrink your function. And so when you pull that function down, that means it's going to get bigger or larger. And so that's why I've associated stretch with small and shrunk with large. So if I look at the first one, I have a 2 right here out in front. Now I notice the 2 is greater than 1, so this tells me this is going to be a stretch, which really means it's going to look, it's going to appear to be smaller. So it's going to be inside of the one that you already have. So when I do that, I'm going to, it's going to have to be on the inside of it. So you see that when I, when I say smaller, I mean it's inside, so you've stretched it to come up farther to the uh, positive y values. Now what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to try going from the absolute value of x to the absolute value of x divided by 2. Again, here is your un un understood 1, so then your coefficient is going to be a fraction. So try that one and come back. So this one is a fraction, so you should have shrunk it, which made it look appear larger because it's outside of your original function. If you're having a really hard time just looking at it and as I'm talking it through, you can actually draw a t-table. And so you can say, you know, I've got x and then I've got my y or this is your f or your g of x. So that if I have 0, I'm going to have 0. So we still know it's at the origin. Now if x is 1, then I'm going to get 1 half. And if x is negative 1, I'm also going to get 1 half where in the original it was, remember, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. So it's actually smaller because it's being shrunk. So you can check your work that way as well.